Hi everyone, you are on the Returning Actor Steph's Diaries and today we're going to talk about self-taping. Very, very important. If you watched the first video where we talked about headshots, that was your very first impression that you give when you send in a casting call. You send in when you submit to a casting call. If you receive a request for the self-tape, this is your second impression that you're going to be giving to the casting director and the people deciding whether or not you're good enough for the film. The world of acting has changed. For those of you that don't know, I have taken a very long break between acting and now I'm returning to the scene of the entertainment. Things have changed. Previously, you would go into a casting room and audition and you have maybe one, maybe two shots at getting it right. So you prepare beforehand and you go in and you get to do your audition maybe once, maybe twice, but that's it. With self-taping, that's amazing because you can do as many takes as you want to get it right, to perfect it, and then send in the version that best represents what you want to share with the world. So, 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 here are the rules of the road when self-taping. Number one, framing. Always leave about two centimeters. Okay, this is... This isn't a very good example. Right, there you go. Two, about two inches. Yeah, two inches above your head. A tight shot, less specified. Number two, lighting. I must admit, this isn't the best lighting, but I needed to do this video quite quickly because I have to work. Well, if you don't have good lighting, sometimes taking it in front of a window um, with the light facing you versus behind you, you don't want to be backlit, would be good. However, the bad thing about that is that you might have a lot of background which is very distracting. So, invest in a small little light. Ring light. Invest in a ring light. It's not that expensive and you most likely can do so. Which brings me to number three. A clean and clear background. You don't want your casting director to be distracted by anything behind you. The moment they start looking at your background and go, Oh, what's that in the background? You know you've lost them. They're no longer paying attention to you, they're no longer paying attention to your performance, they're paying attention to everything else around you. So, clean background where the focus is on you. Number four, sound. Most iPhones and smartphones have really good sound quality, but some of you might want to invest in like a lapel mic. I'm currently using the sound from my phone directly. I don't even have any microphones around, and that's usually quite sufficient. Just pay attention to the noise outside. My walls are really thin. Just do your best. Number five, the really, really important thing, okay, that you need to pay attention to is the instructions given to you from the casting director. Do they want you to include a slate? Do they want you to introduce yourself? Do they want you to tell them what character you're going for? How many variations are they looking for? Can you be flexible with the script? Can you improvise? Because the last thing that you want to give off is the impression that you cannot take direction. And as an actor, that is really important. You have to be able to take direction from the director. And the utmost important thing of all time is submit your self-tapes on time, okay? Keep your file sizes small. Remember, they're getting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of audition tapes, then they might have to play it, and the last thing you want is to send a file that's one gigabyte big. You don't want to send a big file. Thanks for watching, everybody. Um, I will continue to bring to you short videos about my returning to acting journey and I hope you enjoyed them. Let me know if there's anything you want me to cover going forward. Otherwise, thanks for hanging out. Peace.